Hello and welcome to Action Teacher Video. Video is a powerful tool that teachers are using to reflect on their own practice and to communicate new ideas. In this series, we feature videos produced by teachers themselves and discuss the contents and implications here in the studio. In this programme, we'll be looking at an innovative approach to teaching and learning in a special school, Uskol Eru Delin, captured on camera by teacher Lisa Rees and called Teaching Science Through Stories. I'm delighted to be joined in the studio by Lisa Rees. Lisa, hello and welcome to the programme. Joining Lisa is another teacher with some similar experiences and concerns from Lexton Springs Special School, Jackie Wood. Jackie, hello. Hi. I'm also delighted to introduce a consultant and frequent contributor to Teachers TV and someone who has been involved with the teacher video project from the start, Adrian Jones. Firstly, Lisa, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about your video and how you came to shoot that. Um, it started off um, as a continuation of the Rolls-Royce Science Prize. Um, we entered that competition with um, a topic of sensory science boxes. So we already had the boxes established and I just wanted to focus the children more on developing their language alongside the science. Um, and I've worked with the children for quite a long time and I know their love for stories, so it was a natural progression to include the stories as a basis rather than a topic as a basis um, for the activities. And it's proved to be um, really beneficial to the children. Hello and welcome to our school, Ascol Eredelin, or as we say in Wales, Croeso i Ascol Eredelin. We are a residential special school for children with physical and learning difficulties. This project is about encouraging the children to learn about the world around them, to help them develop through their senses. So effectively, learning through science. After working with the children for so many years, we have realised their love for stories. In particular, stories about something which is real. Here, for example, the children are reading The Very Hungry Caterpillar. They each have their own individual books, which are either visual, tactile or a combination of both. In support of the stories we complete a range of activities which focus the children's attention on language taken from the story but language which will be meaningful to the children in their everyday lives. The activities are also highly differentiated. As you'll see from the next few clips it's not just the task but the resources are adapted to suit individual needs. A child with limited speech is investigating fruit and then is matching the symbols which he will later use to select fruit which he wants to eat. Wow, look at that. Oh, All the little seeds. And it's got a stalk here. That's it, with the oranges. Mm -hmm. So where does that one go? Where does that one go? Which one does it go on? Good boy. And where does that one go? Where does it go? Where does it go? It's on one of the labels. Well done. Roll away. Here, a young girl is learning to develop her exploration skills, learning to look and touch real materials. A young boy here has visual difficulties and he's learning to visually track items and shows that he really likes the smell of the fruit. He's using a coloured lens rather than a magnifying glass to attract his attention to the particular subject. Due to his visual and learning difficulties, he is attracted more to a coloured lens rather than a magnifying glass. Mm. Of it. <coughs> Here, a child who has no vision or speech demonstrates that she has learned a sign from the story, one which she can use in her everyday life. 
Bubbles. Hungry, rub your tummy. Good girl. Yeah. Oh, well done. Done. Wow, look at that. We're fortunate that we have a lot of outdoor space which we can use to help the children learn and explore vocabulary and concepts related to the stories. Good boy, good boy, good looking. Come on then. The children are investigating leaves the caterpillars may eat. And some of the smells that come from the flowers that the butterflies are attracted to. Keep them for the basket. Let's move around. Having real items brings the stories alive for the children. So allowing them to feel or look at as many things as possible is of vital importance to their learning and encouraging them to develop new skills. In this clip, the young girl is looking at caterpillars that we looked after from eggs into butterflies. What's he doing? Is he wiggling? Is he going to wiggle wiggle? Using the stories which the children clearly enjoy gives them a base to work from. Then the activities give them the concrete experiences to help them start understanding and building concepts about their world. Tash, be hand out. The children love to repeat the story over and over again and alongside this we looked after and followed the life cycle of some caterpillars which at the end of term we released. What we do is no different to what would happen in a mainstream school. We just spend a little longer doing it and focus on specific things, adapt resources and materials to allow each individual the chance to access their education at a level that allows them to achieve. So many people say that they couldn't do our job, but at the end of the day, regardless of any difficulty, they're still children and have the right to the same education as anyone else. The job is no more difficult, it just challenges you in different ways. <laughs>
No, I mean, the Hungry Caterpillar is a favourite of our, my class anyway. Um, but So it lends itself well to being a science topic. Um, but And it just happened to have all the language in there that I wanted the children to, to be learning. Um, so that's where that came from, really. Okay. Jackie, I just wanted to ask, what kind of parallels are there for you um, in relation to the work that we've seen Lisa doing in her school? Very much so. I mean, um, we, we have stories told in a similar way that can sometimes last for weeks. Uh, for example, recently one of our classes was doing The Selfish Giant and the sensory aspect of the story was built up week by week with the children themselves making the props and it was done in the sensory room. And um, the finished product was, was wonderful, good enough to show the parents, but the children had enjoyed each week as it went along. Is it a coincidence that you both use story such a lot? I don't think I wouldn't it have is, thought is so at no. all. No, Every no. school reads stories. Yeah. We just yeah. we we also read stories. I was just last a little bit longer. But you seem to use it to develop further activities like the conceptual framework in I science and almost D and T or art activity. Yes, and RE and literacy, um, maths, yeah. we have math stories. It's a it's a natural way in really with, with children who find it difficult to learn. I think the children they love repetition. I know it's the same with you. They love repetition of something. So a story is actually one of the things you can repeat over and over and over again, mm -hmm. and they don't get bored of it. Mm -hmm. What you've got to do is make that real to them and make parts of it so they can understand what it's not just a word, it's not just a sound that you're saying, it's actually something like in the giant or the, or the hungry caterpillar that the butterfly is actually a thing. It's not just a word in a story. Having real items brings the stories alive for the children, so allowing them to feel or look at as many things as possible is of vital importance to their learning and encouraging them to develop new skills. In this clip, the young girl is looking at caterpillars that we looked after from eggs into butterflies. Jackie, is that exactly the evidence of the engagement that we're looking for? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. And it's, it's what makes it all worthwhile. And when the parents, for example, get to see something like that, it makes them realise that their children are in the right place. Have you used video before? I mean, because you can use video in so many different ways, and especially in special schools, it's a really important tool, I think, to use to record. Not in such um, a consistent way as this. But you hope to in the future? Very much so, yes. <laughs> so what has that actually done for your own professional development? It actually makes you sit back and think about what you're doing and what you're actually saying. It stimulates reflection amongst a group of staff who are working together because in special schools you often have one teacher and several assistants in any one classroom and they don't often have a chance to talk to each other about what they're doing. Something like this is a focus for that and, it, and it, I think it's going to be very valuable. Unfortunately we've run out of time but I'm sure this has provoked a lot of discussion with our viewers. You can, of course, watch the video again and find out more from our website at teachers.tv. It only remains for me to say thank you to our teacher producer, Lisa Rees, our guest, Jackie Wood, and, of course, Adrian Jones. Please join us again on Action Teacher Video, and in the meantime, from me, Xanthi Steen, goodbye. <laughs>